Hello, my name is Stuart Glynn and I'd like to talk to you about a 5G dual band power amplifier. Okay, I'll just provide some background to this talk. Currently, considerable time and money are being invested in developing millimetre wave technology for 5G. And there is much debate about suitable frequency bands. In the US, bands are being considered at 28 GHz, 37 GHz and 39 GHz. And in Europe, a band has been considered at 26 GHz as the pioneer 5G band, but also a band at 32 GHz is being considered as a future 5G band. So it seems unlikely that there will be a single worldwide 5G band. So dual band and multiband millimetre wave components will become increasingly attractive for high volume applications. Let's look at a specification for a dual band or multiband 5G power amplifier. Well, it should cover the low band, which is the 26 gigahertz band, which stretches from 24.25 gigahertz to 27.5 gigahertz. It should also cover the high band or 32 gigahertz band, which stretches from 31.8 to 33.4 gigahertz. It should have a gain of typically 20 dB in these bands, a P1 dB of typically 30 dBm in these bands, and also a power added efficiency at P1 dB of typically 25%. So let's look at some possible solutions to implement this specification. Well, the first and most obvious is to have two uh, single band power amplifiers which would be the largest solution in terms of uh, size and also would give you the highest cost but should provide the highest performance. If we wanted to go for a smaller solution we could consider a single broadband power amplifier which would be smaller and have a, an expected lower cost but due to the large bandwidth that it has to cover, about 32% we would expect the performance to also be lower than implementing two dedicated single band PAs. Uh, an alternative way of achieving uh, a smaller uh, design and a lower cost design is to go for a switched dual band PA. So it would have the advantages of being smaller and lower as the broadband PA does, but we'd expect it to have higher performance than the broadband PA. And and a performance that was almost as high as the two single band power amplifiers. So we progressed a dual band power amplifier solution based on this analysis of performance, size and cost. And I'll now describe the design, layout and performance of the dual band PA. Okay, I'll just first of all talk about the design strategy. Well, the first thing to do was to design two single band PAs, one for each band, but use a common topology and common transistor sizes and similar bias points. Um, also use multiple power combined transistors. Now this is a technique that's often used at millimeter wave in order to achieve both the power and the gain. So we'll, we'll use that topology again for this one. Once we have our two individual power amplifier designs, it's a matter of converting those two designs into a single switch design. So we'll be looking to switch certain key RF elements such as lengths of transmission line. Now we tend not to use uh, inductors at millimeter wave but rather use lengths of transmission lines so we'll be looking to alter the effective length of transmission lines uh, and then also the other uh, popular matching component are of course capacitors or MAM capacitors and we'll be looking at a means of switching those in order to alter the effect of capacitance between the two bands. Now the way we will implement these switches is by using p-hemp transistors. However the off capacitance can be problematic at millimeter wave. Let me just describe a little bit about using p-hemp transistors as switches. So we have the simple um, schematic of a p-hemp transistor over here. Now these are when used as a switch, they are usually biased at 0 volts VDS. And VG, which is applied here, uh, is usually applied through a large value gate resistor here. 
and to this is a depletion mode process that we are intending to use, a 0.15 micron depletion mode process. And to bias this transistor on, we would apply um, a VGS of zero volts. And if we wish to bias it off, we would apply a VGS of round about minus two volts. Over here is just a simple equivalent circuit of the PHEM transistor as a switch. So when it's on, the, uh, it looks rather like a small value series resistor and the process that we're considering um, a half micron device will have around about 3 ohms on resistance. Um, when it's um, reverse biased, pinched off, um, it looks rather like um, a series uh, capacitor. And uh, for this process again a half millimeter device will have an off capacitance of round about 120, 130 femtofarads. I'll now um, demonstrate um, a, a simple switch using ADS. Okay, so here we have a, a half millimeter p hemp device, and I'll I can conveniently switch between uh, being. Um, zero volts VGS or on and reverse bias using this variable here so at the moment it's going to be um, switched on zero volts VDS so let's simulate this and see what the uh, S parameters look like okay here are the simulation results so um, remember this is in the on case I've placed a marker on the, the highest frequency that we have to consider, which uh, is for the top of the 32 gigahertz band, and that's 33.4 gigahertz. So if this was an ideal switch, this marker that you see here would be right in the center of the Smith chart. But due to the small amount of on resistance of a few ohms, it's shifted over to the right slightly. Down here, which is the, the S21, you can see it has around about a quarter of the dB of insertion loss. Let's see what this looks like in the off case now. So I'll go back to my test bench, alter this variable here, re-simulate. So now the new trace in the off case is, is in bold blue. And you can see the marker at the top of the 32 gigahertz band is here. Now, if it was an ideal switch, the mark would actually be over here near the open circuit. But because it's more like um, uh, a capacitor of, of I said 120, 130 femtofarads. Um, it's in this position on the Smith chart here. And if we look at the forward transmission characteristic or S21, interestingly, there's not much difference um, between the um, on case, which is this thin red, and, and the off case here. So there's not a great deal of, of isolation at these frequencies. Um, so we have to consider these p-hemp devices not as ideal switches, but rather as varying reactances. We could, if we could, of course, if we wanted to have a greater difference on this S21 characteristic between the on case and the off case, we could use a, a smaller device. But the trade-off is that the on resistance would be higher and there'd be larger associated losses. So let's see how I've implemented these switches in the dual band power amplifier. Here is a schematic of my dual band power amplifier. The output stage is here, the driver stage is here, and the input stage is here. So I went for a three stage design. If we look inside the output stage, we can see that I have implemented one, two, three, four devices in parallel, and this is the technique we use at millimeter wave to get both the gain and the power. Now, let's see where I've implemented these switches. So, you can see there's one here, and this has been used to alter the effective length of this drain line between the two bands. So the drain line is running from this net to this net. 
and when this is switched on it reduces the effective length between this net and this net so that's the case for high band and when it's switched off the effective length is increased this transmission line over here which is part of the output matching network is also altered in a, in a similar way using a, a similar switch so that's the case of uh, transmission lines which are um, preferable over inductors for millimeter wave. Let's look at how we can use these switches to alter capacitances. So we've got some capacitance on this net. This one is fixed here and as you can see this one is being altered by the use of this switch here. So when this is on, um, as for the case of low band then the capacitance on this net is highest and when this is off, as for the case of high band, the capacitance on this net is lowest. So that's the output stage. Similar switches are used in, in the other stages. You can see here and here and here for the case of the driver stage. Okay, so let's, let's simulate this. First of all, I'll use this convenient variable here just to configure it for low band. So we'll simulate in low band and look at the results. Okay, so here we have our results for the dual band PA configured for low band. Let's look at the large signal results first of all. So this is P1dB. So you can see that uh, across the, the, the low band uh, the output power P1dB is around about 30 dBm uh, typically across the band and if we look at the efficiency at P1D, P1dB um, typically across the band it, it's around about it's around about 30 percent have a look at the small signal data now so here is the S21 so the gain typically across the band is is around about 19 and a half dBs. We've got a good input return loss. Also a good output return loss. That's uh, that's better than about 17 dBs right across the band. Okay, so let's now go back to our test bench configure the PA for high band and see what that looks like. Okay, so let's look at the high band simulation data. So this is in bold blue and P1dB, which we'll look at first, is um, around about uh, probably 29.8 dBm average or typical across the band and the power added efficiency is probably typically around about 26% uh, across the band. Let's look at the small signal data. So you, you can clearly see the shift in the frequency response from low band to high band here. So uh, the gain is, is typically a sim similar level to, to low band, around about 19.5 dBs. Um, we've got a good input return loss. And you can clearly see the shift in the um, output return loss here, the, or the S22. So that's, uh, that's good, better than 15 dBs across our band. OK, back to the presentation. Let's look at the layout now of our dual band power amplifier. So these switches that I highlighted in the schematic, you can see how it's been implemented in the layout here. So this switch, uh, which I talked about in the schematic, is used to alter the effective length of this drain line here. So during high band, um, it is effectively shorting out this section of transmission line, but during low band, this section of transmission line comes into play, effectively increasing the length of the drain line, 
and this switch here is working in a similar way but for, but for this output matching line here. Let's just look at the pad out for the dual band PA. Well this is the RF input here, the RF output here. The drain supply for stages 1 and 2 can be applied here and the drain supply for stage 3 can be applied here. This um, pad over here is actually the control for the switches that are DC coupled to the drains and we call that V-Control 1. And there's also a V-Control 2 which is here and this is for controlling switches that are DC coupled to the gates. Um, this pad over here is uh, the gate supply for stages 2 and 3, we call that VG23. And this pad over here is the gate supply for stage 1, we call that VG1. Over here is an inverting function, which I'll talk about again shortly. So the truth table is for this dual band power amplifier is shown here. So to configure it for low band, we apply 0 volts to V-Control 1, which was the pad at the top. And we apply VGG to uh, V-Control 2, which is the pad at the bottom. If we can configure it for high band, we apply VDD to V-Control 1. And if we configure it for high band, we also need to apply VG23 to V-Control 2. So when we switch from low band to high band, some switching elements need to be on and some switching elements need to be off. So complementary control signals are required. And the way we um, provide complementary control is by using this inverting circuit that we came up with here. Now implementing an inverting function on a depletion mode process can be quite tricky because the devices are normally on so it's, you cannot pinch them off simply by pulling the gate down to the source, for example, as you could do in an enhancement mode. But we came up with this circuit here to, to provide the, uh, the complementary control. So um, at the input over here, we can apply VGG or VG23. And at the output here, we'll get VG23 or VGG minus VG23 over 2 and the supply rails are VG23 at the top and VGG at the bottom. Now to illustrate this with some numbers it becomes slightly more clear. So if we assign minus 5 volts to VGG and we assign minus 0.6 volts for VG23 you can see that when we input minus 5 volts we get minus 0.6 volts and this would be used to um, switch uh, devices coupled to the gate on and when we apply minus 0.6 volts here, which, was, which is a typical value for VG23, we would get minus 2.2 volts out. And this will be sufficient to reverse bias or pinch off those um, um, gate switch devices. Okay, just like to summarize the presentation now. So we've implemented a 5G dual band power amplifier. And we've used p-hemp switch transistors as the switching elements and shown how we can get around the fact that the off capacitance, um, despite it being quite large, we still managed to um, show we can get good um, dual band PA performance. And we've also shown how we've managed to incorporate an inverting function into the design in order to provide complementary control. The dual band approach offers size and cost benefit over implementing two single band power amplifiers and offers better performance compared to a broadband power amplifier. So to summarise the performance we got, 19.5 um, dB gain in both bands, 30.2 dB P1dB in low band and around 29.8 dB P1dB in high band. The efficiency in low band was about 30% at P1dB and in high band, the P1dB efficiency was about 26%. So this concludes our 5G dual band power amplifier. Thanks for listening. And please visit our website. Thank you.